What former Cubs player was part of the first ever interleague trade to happen without waivers? I'm Dave Michener, and I'm here to tell you about Dave Hillman today on Science Stories. Dave Hillman was born in September of 1927, and as of the recording of this video in July of 2018, he was still alive and well and living in the state of Tennessee. Um, part of the reason for these videos is that I collect autographs of old-time ball players, and I'd happened to receive a autographed card signed by Mr. Hillman just the other day. Uh, following a stint in the United States Air Force, he first broke into the major leagues at the age of 27 in 1955. Um, he found himself playing for the Cubs for the next five years after his debut, and his debut came on April 30th, 1955, playing against the Brooklyn Dodgers at Ebbets Field. What follows is a fictionalized account of how I believe the radio call might have gone, judging by the play-by-play -play analysis on RetroSheets.com. Now, they don't have the pitch counts, so I have no idea how many pitches he actually threw, so I tried to do my best to make an entertaining half-inning over a radio call. Here it comes, and I'll be right back. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Ebbets Field. We are here in the Dodgers half of the seventh. Stan Hack has elected to bring in rookie right-hander Dave Hillman to the rubber and replaces catcher Jim Fanning with veteran Clyde McCullough. Hillman is a right-hander originally from Dunnigan, Virginia, and he spent last season with the Beaumont Exploiters of the Texas League. McCullough needs no introduction as he spent the last two years here in Cubby Blue. Hellman finishes his warm-up tosses and signals that he's ready to play. Up first for the Dodgers, his catcher, Roy Campanella. Here's the windup and the deal. And Campy laces a drive towards center, and that's in there for a hit. Merriman retrieves it and fires it back to Baker, which holds Campanella just to a single. What a start for the young righty, but he's facing some of the best in the business here at Ebbets Field. Sandy Amros digs in, and he shows bunt, but that's in there for a strike. Hellman checks, nods with the sign, takes a glance over Campanella at first. Here's the stretch, here's the deal, and Amoros lays down a beautiful bunt down the third base line. Jackson scoops it up and fires it across to Fondi, which retires Amos, but not without Campy moving to the second on the sacrifice bunt. One away one on and first baseman Gil Hodges steps in Hellman kicks the rubbers and checks the sign from McCullough here's the windup and the pitch and plate umpire Tom Gorman sings out for that being a strike Hellman's wasting no time here he nods and deals Hodges takes a mighty swing and blows one down the line that looks like it might be fair might be no it is hooked foul at the last second that's strike two. We're looking at 0-2 on the first baseman, Hodges. Hillman checks again. And here's the pitch. And Hodges tries to check his swing on the ball down, the, on the, down and outside, but Gorman rings him up. Hillman sets Hodges down with the first strikeout of this young man's career. That brings up Jackie Robinson to the plate. The 36-year-old digs in. He is here in his ninth year with the Dodgers. Hillman throws, and that ball is a little wild, and McCullough does everything he can, and that ball is, does not get behind him. Wonderful work keeps Campanella at second. Hillman continues to waste no time, moving at a good pace, and he checks and deals. And Jackie Robinson hits that hard and high. That is a high fly ball to deep center. Merriman goes back, 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 but that ball is out of here. Jackie Robinson with a two-run home run to deep center field. That'll be his second home run of the young season, and the Dodgers lead 7-2. to two. While Jackie's rounding the bases, McCullough went out to visit his young pitcher, trying to get him calmed down. Gorman breaks up the sewing circle as Carl Ferrillo comes up to the bit, comes up to the plate for the Dodgers. Hillman checks. Here's the windup and the pitch. Oh, Ferrillo just got on top of that ball and it's a, a soft grounder back up towards the mound. Hillman gathers it 
and fires it over to Fonty to end the inning, but not before the damage is done. Jackie Robinson, with his second home run of the season, makes the score 7-2 in favor of the bad guys. We'll be back with the Cubs half of the eighth. After these brief words from our sponsors, and a pause for station identification. Following the 1959 season, Hillman found himself bundled with Jim Marshall and shipped to the Boston Red Sox in exchange for Dick Gimmert on November 21st, 1959. This was the first of three trades to happen in between interleague teams without waivers, and they were the first, and it was the first one to ever be allowed by a change in the rules that happened earlier that season. Um, in the, after two years with Boston, he was sent to the Cincinnati Reds in a, in a, October of 1961. Then in April of 1962, he was returned to the Red Sox as his own future considerations. He didn't make another start for the Red Sox, and it, by the 26th of April that year, or by the 26th of April, he was to the New York Mets. His last game was with the Mets on June 20th of 1962. Now, here's the card that I got signed by him. I like the way it looks. It's on one of my custom um, index cards, photograph cards that I had printed up for players that I don't have a baseball card of. Uh, mainly I use this for older guys but it works well for just about anybody that's ever played baseball. I, li I really like the design. So that's all there is to this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Like, subscribe, comment. Uh, check out my website in the links below. I'll also link to Mr. Hillman's Baseball Almanac and Baseball Reference Profile in the box below. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. See you next week.